Hey y'all, my name is Courtney and I am the voice behind House on Longwood Lane. I am so excited to be a part of this year's Home Depot Holiday Style Challenge. For this challenge, I'm going to show y'all how to make DIY Christmas tree planner boxes. You'll need one sheet of 4x8 plywood and it doesn't have to be the good stuff because it's not going to be seen. And what's awesome is that if you don't have the tools to rip that piece of plywood in half, Home Depot will happily cut it for you. All right, so first we are going to rip the plywood down to size so that we can get these Christmas tree planter bases assembled. Wow, try to say that four times fast. Mounting your plywood on two by fours will give you the best control while using your circular saw. Measure 15 and three quarter inches across marking the top, middle, and bottom. Take your square and draw a line so you know where to cut. The width of my boards were cut to 19 inches at Home Depot so I could transport them in my car. All right, and after you make that cut, I did mine at 15 and 3 quarters. I'm gonna go ahead and do that three more times. Next, you'll cut 12 slats for the size of the planter box at 17 and 3 eighths of an inch. Once you have made all your cuts, it's time to assemble your planter box. All right, y'all, now that we have all of our pieces of plywood ripped, we are now going to make pocket hole screws. And there are two different types of Craig jigs that you can actually use for this project. The first one is the Craig jig pocket hole system, the R3. So it's this little bitty one. And the next one is the Craig Jig K4 system. Which Make is four pocket holes at three quarters of an inch thickness on the 19 inch sides. So you should have two matching pieces that have four pocket hole screws on each side. So these are going to be the braces here. And then the two pieces that go here do not have any pocket holes. So you should have two pieces with pocket holes and two pieces without pocket holes. Right, before I go ahead and attach my pocket hole screws, I'm going to use a clamp to hold my back piece to the piece that has all of the pocket hole screws. So one of the great things about using clamps right now is that you're keeping this piece and this piece in place and they're both straight on both sides as opposed to just using my hand, there's a possibility of when I screw the pocket hole screw into this back piece, it'll move and it won't be lined up anymore. Attach the outermost pocket holes first to secure, and then the inside pocket holes. And notice, the other piece that I am attaching has no pocket holes on it. I am using the piece right here that has pocket holes drilled onto it to secure into the pieces that don't. Repeat the same steps on the other side. Flip the U-shape over and repeat by attaching pocket hole screws on the other side. Now it's time to attach the bottom. Use clamps to secure and a broad nailer with one and three quarter inch broad nails. All right, now we're gonna use the broad nailer and we're going to attach all of these one by two pieces that we just cut with the miter saw. And we're going to start at the top. That way, if there's any space left over, it's at the bottom and you won't be able to see that. We're going to use wood glue on the back, and then we're going to do one broad nail here, and then one broad nail here, and possibly one in the middle, depending on if it's bowing. We're also going to use my trusty clamps. Alright, I laid the clamps on the side so that I could still reach 
the corner so I could do a few broad nails in there. So I did two at the top, one at the bottom, one at the top, and then bottom and top. Once you undo your clamps and see if it looks like you need any in the middle. We don't need any in, our, in the middle of ours. So I have some paint stir sticks that I'm going to use as my spacers in here because I don't want them to be right up against each other. I want there to be a small space. So I'm going to go ahead. You'll repeat this step of attaching the slats to all three sides. I decided to only do three sides since the back part was going to be against the wall and nobody was going to see that. After I cut all the slats for the sides, I found out that I had a ton of scrap wood left over. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with this. So I decided to, and voila, I decided to make mitered edges so I can make a trim on the top of the planner box. The plywood edges didn't look bad. I just really wanted a finished look and I had extra wood, so why not? Use wood glue and a bread nailer to attach. Cut two inch two by twos for legs and attach with wood glue. After the glue has dried, give them a wiggle to make sure they're secure. For a smooth finish, sand down the top and edges using 120 and 220 grit sandpaper. <laughs> Thanks for watching y'all. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make DIY Christmas tree planter boxes for your front porch.